mobility is the future. At least it's the climate crisis solution car makers and politicians can agree on. But what about stuff like this? In 2021, Korean car maker Hyundai had to recall 80,000 vehicles, mostly Konos because of the risk of their batteries catching fire. And they're not alone. Ford, GM, BMW, even Tesla have all had serious issues with batteries burning or overheating. That's scary, right? But how scared should we be about all these electric cars and their batteries? Time for a five-point fact check. EVs catch fire faster. The good news, it's not true. If anything, battery EVs or BEVs are actually safer than their oil-burning forerunners. The bad news, when lithium-ion batteries do burn, they really burn. Doesn't matter if it's because of a crash, overheating or a short circuit, a burning battery cell can set off a chain reaction with its neighboring cells and there are hundreds in the average EV battery pack. You get an EV meltdown. The lithium ion batteries produce their own oxygen within the battery case and the fire can grow throughout the battery by using the heat from the thermal runaway and the oxygen that's being produced within the battery. So at this point, the, really the only effective way for rescuers to stop that thermal runaway is to cool that battery down enough for the thermal runaway to cease. And this takes a tremendous amount of water. And of course, the tremendous amount of water is also tremendously contaminated. So if it's not very cool to throw bathtubs of water on a burning EV, why not just dump the whole burning EV in a big bathtub of water? When we submerge a vehicle into a bath of water, it's possible that we will create further thermal runaway in other areas of the battery, areas where we may not have had fire in the first place. So right now there's a lot of people trying a lot of different techniques. Yep, it seems there is no clear and simple way of dealing with a battery fire. And even when the fire gets under control, the car and its battery are essentially hazardous waste. And there have to be monitored and quarantine conditions because there is still a chance they could reignite. But then again, it's not even clear where the battery in an EV is. Kurze Frage, wissen Sie, wo Ihre Batterie sitzt in dem Auto? Ja, unten im Unterboden. Wir telefoniert. Wissen Sie, wo Ihre Batterie ist in diesem Auto? Äh, ich vermute, sie ist überall verbaut. On to point two. Lithium-ion batteries are bad for the environment. In Chile and Bolivia, lithium extraction is seriously impacting local freshwater supplies with potentially catastrophic consequences for the region's ecosystem. And then there is cobalt. Most of this key component comes from Congo and it's estimated a third of that comes from unregulated or illegal mines with poor working conditions and even child labor. It's a PR disaster for car makers hoping to rebrand themselves as forces for ecological and social good. An electric car uh, must not be worse than a conventional car. And that's why we were first in, this, in the industry to have a close look at the whole supply chain to avoid a child labor in this area or the, um, or the destruction of the environment. Okay, but what does that actually mean? With BMW, we are sourcing our materials like cobalt and lithium from uh, Morocco and uh, Australia. And we buy these uh, materials not at the stock exchange for these materials. We buy them directly from the mineries where they are brought to the surface and then we hand them over to our production. So German car makers are moving towards more sustainable battery production and reducing dependence on Asian suppliers. In fact, the European Union is backing a consortium of firms to cover the entire battery supply chain from start to finish, including recycling. 
Which brings us to the next point. Batteries degrade too quickly and then are useless. That is a big worry. The battery pack is the most expensive part of any V. You do not want to fail it. Car makers tend to offer battery guarantees of about 8 to 15 years, but it's kind of weird that no one can say how long for sure. It depends on how you use it, of course. Charging at a snail's pace at home will not wear things out as much as rapid DC charging. Batteries not strong enough to run a car anymore can get a second life as a battery storage power station for stabilizing power grids. When the cells are finally fried, they can be recycled. But that's complicated and expensive, right? The German company Dusenfeld says it can recycle more than 90% of an EV battery. Check this out! Because there are so many battery types, the first sorting process has to be done by hand. Then the components get crushed and separated. The reclaimed lithium, cobalt and graphite can all be used to produce new batteries. It's not industrial scale recycling yet, but with the amount of batteries needed to power the EV revolution, there has to be a solution. Here's a professor to tell you what the future of batteries could look like. For example, we're working on a solid-state battery. We'll see a range of new battery technologies that meet these criteria, cost less to produce, and above all, offer a better performance to weight ratio. That actually sound promising for the future, but why are people here in Germany still a bit sketchy about EVs? The range isn't good enough. If they had better range, I would switch over completely. But I travel to places where there are no charging stations. Or here, I can't use this new station. I don't have an electric car because it's too expensive. I'd like to drive one, but the problem is the charging station. We can't get one installed. Well, I'm actually quite satisfied, except in the winter. When it gets cold, the car does not really warm up. My feet are always cold. So, will EVs start coming with free slippers? Just kidding. Range anxiety is the big thing, and here's surely something we all can agree on. There aren't enough EV charging stations. There certainly aren't enough in Germany. That's why the German government is putting up 400 million euros to fund home charging stations that run off green energy power. So what if you get stuck? I checked out an ingenious startup on the outskirts of Berlin that can charge your car even when you're miles from the next electricity socket. You could put your charging station on a greenfield site, for example, couldn't you? Yes, we can. We need no connection to the grid. And that is the advantage of our system. We produce the electricity inside our system. That means we have a generator that is fueled up with bioethanol. In a next step, we are changing the combustion to methanol. That is a different thing. And this is made from garbage, also from plastic waste. In the moment, the system has 150 kilowatts. In the future, the system will double the energy. That means our next system will have 300 kilowatts. It's a really cool invention, but there is no way it will be enough to charge the 10 million EVs that Germany could well have by 2030. What will happen when all those cars with their huge energy requirements hook up to the national grid at the same time? Guess what? In future, um, it is also possible that an electric car not only takes electricity from the electric grid, but it can also give um, stored uh, electricity back into the grid. And that has the advantage that the uh, enforcements in the electric grid can be smaller 
when you have all the electric cars as buffers. Wow, that is a future I want to be part of, which brings up our last point. What about the future of EVs? It looks like there are some very critical issues around the production and powering of battery EVs, but there is also a lot of effort going into solving those problems. But still, are electric cars the only way out of the climate crisis or are they just another big hype? We're going to see self-driving cars, and there will be service providers who will place a car at my disposal at the click of a mouse. I won't have to worry about maintenance or repairs or washing the car. I probably won't even want to own a car, because I can choose whether I want a small car to get into town or a bigger one for the shopping or holidays. Many more options. There will be exciting surprises in the completely new world of mobility. Now there is food for thought. Who needs to actually own a car anymore? It just stands around unused for most of the time anyway. Maybe we should talk about that too. Hope you liked the video. It was great chatting to you. Please write me your comments below and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more from Rev. Bye.